and his opponent, fighting out of Colleen, Texas, USA. Here is Rashard Too Quick Hicks. I have to be honest, Mozzie, I've really been looking forward to the return of Rashard Hicks. And so has the chat. The chat has been here looking for Hicks all night long. And ladies and gentlemen, Hicks is here. I see it. Let's go, Shad. What belts do he have? What belt does he have? What, what belts does he have? Uh, he is a former. Uh, well, right now it looks like he has an ABF belt there. He also has a Texas program sports belt, and I'm trying to see the other one, but I can't see it because it's covered up now. I see four here, and that's a lot. And all fight fans, we continue the action. This contest scheduled for six rounds of the Super Walter White Division. The three judges scoring this contest he's... at ringside are his last fight was Ruben Carrion, Angel was. Mendes, that, that came in 2019. and Luis and a referee in charge at the sound of the bell, Rafael Ramos. Introducing to you first tonight, body out of the blue corner, wearing white with purple, he officially weighed in 151.4 pounds. Tonight, making his 25th professional appearance with two KO victories, Fighting out of Waco, Texas, in the USA, here is Marquise the Hawk Hawthorne. And across the ring stands his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, standing with trainer Ray Williams and Derek Collingsworth, tonight wearing camouflage trunks. He officially weighed in 152.4 pounds. In 14 professional contests, his record is outstanding. 12 victories, six wins coming to you by way of knockout. Only one defeat and one draw. Introducing to you the former multi-time champion, fighting out of Colleen, Texas, USA. Here is Rashard Too Quick. Too quick. I mean, we saw Ingram. We that was see pretty some quick. fireworks. Fireworks. Yeah. <laughs> we got to. We got to see some. The question is just how much ring rust is Rashard going to have? Again, he had that long layoff between 2019 and now. He said it was to get healthy, to recover, get his body right. But he also told me, you know, he's a military veteran. He's been in the combat zone, so he's not phased by stepping back into the ring after the layoff. That, like you said, that is a long break from 2019 to now. That's a long layoff. And we'll see if, if that helps out. Those are all words until you get punched in the face. And now we'll see what happens as he, he has a game opponent in Marquise the Hawk Hawthorne. Yes, 8 and 16, a couple of KO wins. But in his last couple of fights, he has gone the distance. One six rounder, one four rounder. However, he does fight undefeated fighters and guys that have records like Hicks. So he likes to fight top tier competition. He has held an ABF USA welterweight title in his past, has Hawthorne. So he has the capabilities to surprise anyone on any given night. Definitely looking forward to a good fight. Nice left from Hicks to the midsection. Yeah, I wonder how much of a feel out period that Richard Hicks is going to want to go through here. Hawk can be slick. It looks like he's looking for, being strategic, looking for a, a low body shot, but looks like Hicks is, is staying, he's keeping his distance and only going in there when need to. Well, I did ask Hawthorne what was going to be his key to success, and he said staying on the game plan and more importantly, moving when he needs to move. As they wrap up. I'm, I'm just not too sure what to expect from Hicks because I know from his history what he's capable of. But you know, Father Time catches up with all of us at one point or another. Absolutely. And we'll see if, if it may be detrimental to Hicks or could this long break be a benefit to him? Like, Keldon, you think you can dunk until the age of 50? Uh, I just feel like with a new technology, anything possible. <laughs> I feel like, uh, but seriously, I feel like I take care of my body, so uh, I feel like that. Uh, I 
hopefully when I'm 50, I'm not trying to go. If I need to, uh, I will. For sure. Well, sure. I'm hoping that you have a couple of NBA championships and a few all-star nods to go along with your career by that point. Yes, sir. That's the plan, 100%. All right, man. So I know there's some Spurs fans in the chat, man. People want to know there's a lot of talk going on, but what, what, what's, what's, the, what's the, goal, the game plan for the Spurs this season? Because I know you're a competitor and Coach Pop is a competitor, man. What, what What's the season? What, what are we going into, man, this season? Definitely. You know, we're definitely going to go win. We definitely expect to win. We're putting the time to win. For sure. I feel like uh, we got a lot of young, hungry guys. I feel like we all been in the gym all summer. So uh, we know we've been grinding. So now it's just time to, you know, once we get all healthy, to, to put it into play. For I sure. Like uh, Mozzie, I have this person say, nah, go Lakers in the chat room. Are, you, are they friends with you? Uh, they might be my friends, man. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> you guys are ruthless out there on hey, the chat. Man, I'm yeah. telling you. Listen, man. The, 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 the chat knows, man. Go Lakers, go. But Keldon, you know what I'm saying? All they say, that's my guy. <laughs> you know. Look, look at <laughs> The side eye. I love the it. The side eye, man. And the round one. And the round one. Hey, hey, what, what, hey, like? hey, I can't even hey. focus. You over here talking about the Lakers. You know what I got to say? <laughs> Put it in a circle. Put it in a circle. Well, well, half of doing this is having a good time, so we'll talk about anything. I haven't even got to Mozzie about Antonio, all the hip-hop stuff. San Antonio, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> round number two. Like round that, number you know, two. Y'all make, make it cool. You know, we just. Yeah, yeah man. We just have to talk about everything out here. I know yeah, I'm, for sure. It's like I know I'm wearing a suit, but it really is just laid back, and we're just having fun, yeah, you know? Sure. Just having a nice conversation. Y'all make boxing. it easy for my first time commentating. This fighting. is your first time? First time. I would have never guessed that, honestly. You're a natural, though. Yeah, dude, for real. I feel like this is my first time, like, commentating. Thing. So I feel like y'all made it so easy. No, man, sure, we man. hope to have you back, dude. You have a great, great flow. And, you know, yeah, man, for sure. Nice. For sure. Now, we, we glad to have you here chopping up with us and watching some boxing, man. For sure. But with, know, the, with the first round, I, I don't know who, who, would, who, who walked out of there with a, with a win, but uh, it looked kind of even to me. It looked, definitely looked kind of split. No, I definitely think that these guys know that they have to just kind of feel it out. Yeah. Get their legs beneath them. Especially not a big deal, but I, I, in the back of my mind, it has to be. But I like his confidence. For sure. Well, I did take these notes. You're starting to read my notes here. So I was going to ask you about uh, Nicki Minaj getting a class taught about herself at Cal Berkeley. Oh, wow. Did you hear about that? No. The Black Barbie ah. family oh. and hip-hop feminism. That's the class over Nicki. And what she's uh, attributed to the hip-hop culture. If that's the... Highest level of narcissism that I've ever seen or heard in my life. That, that's it. I mean, they teach the Simpsons in college classes. <laughs> that's a, yo, is, is this what we're spending our money on, man? <laughs> I mean, if that was my kid going to Cal, I would have asked that they, you know, maybe take something more useful. But I understand. You know, uh, need some sure, electives. Sure, yeah. You got, some, you got some electives to waste, then I guess go study about Nicki Minaj. But uh, me personally, I'm good. I would definitely try for the Cal Berkeley uh, hoop squad if they got one. Oh, they definitely do. Jason Kidd used to play there. That's right, Jason. No, that's right. That's right. Probably my favorite point guard. No hate if you're a Magic Johnson fan. You know, uh, Kelda, you're, you're much younger than we are. Who, who did you watch growing up? Um, uh, Allen Iverson. Oh, yes. You know, AI. The answer. As we enter the splash zone, okay, got out of there quickly. And yeah, talking about answers, it looks like Hicks was trying to find the answer right there. With Absolutely. that blow to the solar plexus. Yeah. It's funny you, you mentioned AI, man. I remember uh, I was talking to my guy Skrulls, man, and we were talking about how much Allen Iverson impacted the culture of basketball. Yes, I know me personally, growing up, watching Iverson play, I did grow my hair out. I had braids, trying to hoop, you know what I mean? All, all those missing was the arm sleeve <laughs> and some tattoos. And oh, shoes. my gosh. Every kid had an arm sleeve before there were arm sleeves. Exactly. I'm going to tell you what's so crazy. Like, I used to love Allen Iverson. Uh -huh. uh, one reason why we're number three. Oh, and cool. my dad would never let me grow my hair out. <laughs> <laughs> or or he, he would never let me wear arm sleeve when I played basketball. Oh, man. I used to have, like, the one step above ball. To, oh, wow. To, like, probably, like, ninth or tenth grade in high school. Like, yeah. I had the, 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 the skin. The skin being the – a matter of fact, I had the Kobe cut. Oh, wow. Oh, nice. Come on, close, close. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Somebody out there saying that they got AI's jersey. Uh, understandably, I remember that Source magazine cover too, man. And that's because, legendary. you know. Legend legendary Slam cover. Um, oh, thank you, Slam. I said yeah, Source, slam, right? Yeah, My yeah, bad. yeah, Slam cover. Um, there's actually two covers with, with I or Arsenal. On. One with the braids, one with the fro. Yeah. Both were legendary. As these fighters, they really get into it in round two. Hicks definitely going in there with a nice one-two. 
That'll be the end of round number two. Again, a little bit like round number one. Both guys sending those punches. No real dangerous shots being delivered as both, you know, kind of staying out of that danger zone, if you will. I, I think, I think if, if you ask me, it's definitely a chess match. I think one person makes a move. The next runner, next opponent makes another Don't move. Don't forget the after one. party tonight. 42, stop by 42 for the for after sure, party for Brawl or Nothing. And thank you for coming out to the Tech Ford so, Arena. Something has to happen now if you're gonna walk out of here a winner. Oh, I'll take that back. Scheduled six, my friend. Oh, six, that's oh, my bad, my bad. Oh, I gave you the four oh, sign. So, so, so we, okay, so we're halfway through. Okay. So I think that's why it's a little slow to start. Both of these guys just trying to conserve some energy. A lot of the fights have been four-rounders, so, yeah. you know, I, even I was confused there. Oh, for sure. The Hawk, his last win came back in the last time that Richard actually fought. It was back in 2019. It was on a Davies Entertainment card at the Alamo Dome where he defeated Daniel Baez for the vacant ABF USA welterweight title in a round two KO. And he went in there, nice one two, had, had, uh, had Hawthorne stumble in a little bit. But Hawthorne's capable, I'm telling you. It only takes that one punch. We've seen it happen already many times tonight. And Absolutely. again, don't forget, it's brawl or nothing. I want to thank you again for joining us. Purses are on the line. KO bonuses are being paid out. And uh, Mr. Cameron Davis, or excuse me, Mr. Cameron Davies has already spent a lot of money tonight. A lot of money has been dealt out. Biggest payout so far has been 2500 for the knockout. And uh, this, this has been an, oh, an incredible event tonight. Hopefully we see y'all here at the next one, Super Brawl on February 11th back here at the Tech Port Arena. I gotta find out who makes the names, man. They've done a terrific job. I love yeah, all absolutely. the names. I believe I believe it's the creative team, and shout out to the creative team over at Davies, um, but they they do their thing over there. But right now it's Brawl or Nothing. Yeah, talking about too quick, as I heard from his corner, he's right now just stalking down Hawthorne. It looks like there's a little blood on the lip of Marquise. Maybe not. Maybe that was just his mouthpiece. Yes, sir. But you look at the, the balance of Richard Hicks, though. Good foot movement, good balance, and he's just staying out of range, man. Yeah. And now he's talking. Really excited to see Richard back in the ring, going back to his craft. I know he suffered that round one TKO against Daniard Yelisanova, who was an undefeated fighter back in 2019. But he fought at MSG. Mm. Oh, so, wow, big so, stage. Yeah, so Hicks is not afraid of the big stage, that's for sure. But Kelda, Kelda, what's some of the, you know, when you talk about, you know, the NBA and some of the big stages, has Madison Square Garden been one of the biggest stages that kind of like, you know, gave you those goosebumps? Because all players talk about Madison Square Garden. Yeah. And, and how inc how incredible that is. I feel like uh, yeah, MSG is definitely uh, one of a kind. I feel like it was uh, it wasn't as bad for me my my like my first few years in the league because in college we played at uh, MSG so was, right yeah but it was nice as Hicks is giving Hawthorne a beating. Yeah, he snuck in those two hits right here near ringside. I mean, Hicks looks really comfortable right now. Very poised. Oh, and good hit by Hawthorne. Final 10 seconds of round number three, scheduled for six. And you know, his corner makes a good point. Let him do the wrestling. I thought we were to get a little extracurricular activity there, but right. that's not the case. But yes, <laughs> but Hawthorne is tiring himself out by trying to wrestle with Hicks as he's just getting out of the reach. Shout yeah, out Texas it's, it's Rock it's Millie it's in the building. Up what up, Texas tired. Rock so, Millie? What up? Well, see that? I think that's the beauty of boxing when it comes to, you know, like you said, the conditioning and the in, in knowing your body and how long. It is in the roots, not the branches, that a tree's greatest strength lies. From humble beginnings to esteemed personal injury attorney. Through it all, Joe A. Gomez remembers his origins. He remembers the struggle. He remembers his community. San Antonio, round number four.
Just remember, number four. Gomez Law fights. Energy friendly spot Quiddle, Gomez Law Firm, our title sponsor, Texas Rock Milling, Ace Private Investigators, Automotive Solutions, BFB, Davis, da I keep on saying Davis, I don't know why. <laughs> Davies Sports Agency, Mozzie's World, Davies Boxing and Fitness, of course, the Money Team, Tech Port Arena, Davies Entertainment, Cruising Kitchens, Printed yes, Custom yes, Wraps and Graphics, Santa Cana, and of course, be on the lookout for Super Brawl on February 11th. Indeed. Here from the Tech Port Center and Arena in San Antonio, Texas. The premier underground fight club goes mainstream. This is where combat does meet culture as we will have a good performance coming up at the next intermission. Indeed. Nice, nice overcut. It looks like Hawthorne was trying to trip him up on the way down with his foot. And, and you know, that's like the game within the game. You always have to look at the footwork, see if anybody's stepping on anybody else's foot. For sure. You know, just trying to utilize, it's, it's, a, it's a fight. You're trying to win. Any means possible if the referee doesn't see it, right? Right, <laughs> exactly, that's usually how it goes. Just like pro wrestling. Oh, <laughs> nice left from Hicks. Good combination there with the one-two. And is it just me or does Hawthorne look a little gassed a little bit? Look tired. He tired, man. Tired, <laughs> He's tired, man. He's lunging, that's for sure. Yeah, man. He gonna walk into one, man. It's 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 wild when you know. Quit looking at your work, Rashad. Quit looking at your work. Yeah, as you can hear the the coaches and the trainers, um, Hawthorne is definitely leaning into a lot of those a lot of those hooks and. You know, jabs, and it just shows, you know, the, the fatigue is setting in right now for Hawthorne. I'm wondering if the stamina is going to be an issue here for Hicks. Again, the long layoff since he's been back in the ring since 2019. In fact, it's been over three years now since he stepped into the squared circle. Oh, nice. Snuck that hook in there. Hawthorne ready to go. He threw that in there. Calvin's oh. calling it. He ready to go. And they're calling it. They're stopping the fight. Yeah, the doctor got up. He said he's seen enough. He's seen enough. And uh, I'm assuming that a retirement counts as a KO on your record. Does he get paid out? That's interesting. I, I, I don't know how that works. I guess we'll... We'll I'm, see how that works I, with camera. I mean, it wasn't all the splash and dash like the other knockouts, but technically, that's a knockout. It's a stoppage. So, I mean, I would, I would consider that a, a knockout, but, you know, or maybe a TKO. I'm not sure how, how they would rule it. But uh, either way, great fight for both competitors. And Hicks is going to walk away with the dub. And I wonder if is, and the, is the chat going crazy right now. Let's, 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 let's take, take a, a look, look, look at the chat. chat. See, let's see if Team Hicks is in the building for sure. Yes, TKO is a KO for sure. That's right. Oh, you're not leaving us now yet. You got a lot of great fights coming up. You don't want to <laughs> miss it. You guys are too much in the chat. I'm telling you, I can't repeat some of the stuff that's being said, but it is making me laugh. <laughs> well, the ref didn't stop the fight. It was a doctor on the side of the ring who got up on the apron and stopped the fight, you know? Yeah. I, I, I'm with you. Richard still had his hands up. Or not Richard, excuse me, Marquise. Oh, I understand. I understand. So, But a good performance there from Richard Hicks, knocking off the ring rust, getting the stoppage. Getting the stoppage. I mean, I, I didn't see that coming, but I understand it. Um, especially, you know, earlier with the earlier knockouts uh, that we had tonight in the previous matches. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time comes to you, 2.06. Let's hear from Jeremiah Gallegos. To, to the winner by TKO, the fighting pride of Colleen, Texas, USA, Russia, too quick. That's now seven KOs on his record. Nice. San Antonio, Texas, your winner tonight. Two quick hits. Make some noise. So that's the first time I've had to witness you boxing. Fast, hand skills. How did you feel coming in tonight's match?
I felt good, but I'm going to tell you now, I'm tired as fuck right now. Hey, that's, yeah, that's the, truth. the truth. Boxing, Boxing is, a is a real sport. sport. They, they think it's real easy. easy. What's, what's next, next for you? Because I'm sure now that we witnessed this victory, victory we're going to want to see what's next, next in your next, next match, match coming up. Man, I took three years off. I'm 37 years old, and I'm doing what people said I couldn't do at my age. So I'm still knocking motherfuckers out, so we're going to keep pushing. That's right. San Antonio, San Antonio you're, you're winner tonight. tonight. Too, Too quick. quick. Hicks. Hicks. Thank you.